We know Howard Schultz is the bankable founder, chairman, and CEO of Starbucks. What you may not know, though, is that Howard is not only a phenomenal executive, he's also a great philanthropist. Just today, Schultz's Family Foundation helped launch a massive jobs fair in Chicago as part of the 100,000 Opportunities Coalition, which aims to work with employers to create 100,000 jobs, internships, and apprenticeships for disconnected young people over the next three years, including 10,000 positions at Starbucks alone. Now, earlier today, I got a chance to chat with Howard Schultz. Take a look. Howard, good to see you as always. Thanks, Jim. How are you today? I'm doing real well, Howard. This is a coalition that you're putting together for 100,000 opportunities. It's a coalition of CEOs I know, some Republican, some Democrat, and companies that are mortal enemies. Target versus Walmart, for heaven's sake. Walgreen versus CVS. How are you able to get these companies together in the same room and get something done? Well, first off, I, I uh, thank you for the opportunity to really talk about this today. I wish we were filming this in the hall behind me. You can see the thousands of young people who are here today with smiles on their face, given the opportunity that they don't view as an entitlement, but a privilege to work for a company. Now, what we try to do is convene like-minded companies, like-minded leaders to come together, uh, bury the hatchet of competition, and recognize that there's 5.6 million disconnected youth in the country, not in school, not working, many of whom are African-American and Latino. And let's try and do something that perhaps, that if we came together as a coalition, 30 great companies, uh, we work with the local nonprofits, uh, we get the support and leadership of, of Mayor uh, Rahm Emanuel has been fantastic, and we launched this in Chicago, recognizing that we could hire 100,000 people. And I think what this demonstrates more than anything else is that this is a time in America where the private se sector must step up. And I think I'm so proud of the people that I called. No one turned me down. And as you said, there are competitors in the room. Uh, they're talking about one another today, not about their business, but about these kids. Uh, we're not here to talk about our earnings. We're not here to talk about our products. We're here to talk about the opportunity that we can create for these young people who unfortunately are living at a time when the promise of America and the American dream doesn't mean as much to them as it did for our generation. And we've got to change that. And this is the beginning today. Well, Howard, I've got to tell you, uh, people of our generation, you know, I count you as mine, mine of yours, we were used to, when we were growing up, seeing the federal government do this. It's interesting you mentioned a mayor, a local mayor. This is the kind of initiative that a Robert F. Kennedy would have brought up, that there would have been a sense that the federal government has to get corporations involved, not the opposite. What's happened in our country that it's the CEOs that have to do this? Well, I think uh, the rules of engagement, unfortunately, have changed. Uh, What's going on in that room behind me with these thousands of kids and these, co and these companies is an example of servant leadership. Uh, and I think uh, whether you're Republican or Democrat, unfortunately, there's a void in this country with regard to servant leadership. And businesses have to demonstrate. And I think we are emblematic of that, of that as a company that not everything is for profit. Uh, and things like this today uh, will add value to the companies uh, that are represented to today. Uh, culturally, they'll be better for it. They're going to hire great young people. And at Starbucks, uh, not only are we going to hire great young people today who, who may not have had an opportunity, but because of the college achievement plan that we have embedded in our company, it is a pathway for free four-year college education. Uh, I'm not here to criticize the government, but I am here to say that it is a time in America where businesses and business leaders must recognize that we must do more for our country, for our society, the communities we serve, and in this case, 5.6 million disconnected youth who unfortunately, uh, when you sit down with them, there's a feeling of hopelessness, but there's such a desire uh, to succeed and all they need uh, is some help. And this is not charity. In many ways, this is justice. Well, Howard, let me ask you. Uh, these you use the term uh, middle. You talk about the idea of middle jobs. Uh, when I speak with the labor secretary, he doesn't want to talk about middle skilled jobs. He wants to talk about high skill, trying to put these people through fancy colleges sometimes. The GOP itself, this is too expensive for them. They don't want any federal government money involved in helping business. Why are both parties failing this particular group 
who no one seems to want to help middle skilled people who aren't going to go to the best colleges in the world but can have great fulfilled lives get a job at Starbucks and go to college have dignity what's the matter with that Jim I think you're exactly right and I, I think uh, it's ironic in many ways that we're hosting this event uh, very close to the anniversary of Ferguson and if you think about the cultural divide and the racial divide in the country, uh, one of the primary reasons uh, that this is going on in the country today is that many of these young people are African American and Latino and, are, and have no job and are not in school and do not have a voice. And you're asking a very important question. Uh, the responsibility of the government and, and the elected officials uh, is for all Americans. And it goes back to what I said earlier. When we grew up, the promise of America and the American dream was aspirational. It was real. And we saw ourselves in it. You mentioned RFK, and he, he, he was an example of that. At this time in America, 5.6 million disconnected youth do not see themselves uh, in the American dream. And we have to reverse that. Well, and well, I think Howard. it is unfortunate. But you're raising points uh, that... that uh, bring me back to an excellent op-ed you wrote. Howard Schultz, America deserves a servant leader. In that, you say politicians can't do the things. They're too angry at each other, no coalition. You are a person who is a uniter. Uh, would you not have more success running for president, talking about starting somewhere, 100,000 opportunities? And couldn't you counter the Donald Trump? You could get as much publicity with a Democrat debate as he's getting with Republican. It's working for him. Why couldn't it work for you? Well, Jim, I'm, I'm not here to, to uh, talk about politics specifically. Uh, I, I really feel, and I think that today is a, is, is a demonstration of that, I could do much more uh, with regard to the platform I have at Starbucks to make these kind of things happen uh, that I could if I was a classic politician. Uh, I, I look at the environment and I feel it's not for me. Uh, I, I'm a business person, first and foremost, that has a, uh, a, the kind of company that I think has balanced profit with a social conscience, and that's what I want to continue to do. But I also want to work with local government officials around the country. This is the beginning of something we're starting in Chicago that we're going to take around the country. Uh, my family foundation has made a significant financial contribution to, the, to these kids, and I think I could do more as a private citizen. Uh, the op-ed I wrote was really a calling and hopefully a recognition uh, that the dysfunction and the polarization in Washington has got to stop, that we're running out of time, uh, and it's a time in the country where we need leadership at every sector of our society, private and public. And this is one, one good example where we're a working mayor, working with wraparound local services and 30 extraordinary companies, many of whom are competitors, coming together for one purpose, and that is help these kids who otherwise could not help themselves. Okay, well, I do have to go back. I mean, I see Trump playing a role. Uh, gets all the airtime he wants. Why couldn't you be the Trump for the other party? Jim, <laughs> I'm, I'm not here to talk about Howard Schultz uh, running for president. <laughs> I've, I've made that clear. That's not what I'm going to do. Fair uh, enough. I'm here for Starbucks and doing everything I can, everything I can to add value to our shareholders and, most importantly, to 300,000 people and their families who are relying on me as a leader to enhance and preserve their company at Starbucks. Well, Howard, I got to tell you, I never thought that a CEO could play a bigger role in trying to change the country than someone who moves running for president. But this is very clear to me that you are. Thank you so much, Howard Schultz, chairman and CEO of Starbucks. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Dick. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.